So uh, good good afternoon, everyone. Is it good afternoon here? This afternoon here in the Philippines. Yeah, so I'll be talking about electric classical specification operations and economics. I guess there will be a lot of parallelism between uh, Kathmandu and Philippines in terms of the peoples that we're using. Yeah. So I'll be talking about classicals in the Philippines. Where do we use them, for example? Uh, then recently, there's a change in face of tricycles. I'm going to talk about the uh, e-track technologies in the country, e-track economics, operations, design and viability. And um, I guess the session is mostly, you know, would want to focus also on retrofitting. So I'm going to answer that, that question also to retrofit or not, and then some key points. Yeah. So tricycles in the Philippines. Um, it's used for public or family transport. It's a very popular mode of transport. Uh, apparently, there's around 650,000 official public transport units. Official in the sense that uh, they're licensed by the government, but uh, normally, uh, we would always say that uh, you double that, that is the actual number, actually, of tricycles. So the vehicle kilometer, daily vehicle, vehicle, the, uh, the vehicle kilometer travel ranges from 40 to 100 kilometers per day. And normally, it's used for last mile. And uh, But in the provinces, um, it's basically the main mode of transport. So it's used for intra-city municipality uh, uh, services or mobility. It's mostly used in local roads in urban areas, but uh, since in the provinces is the main mode of transport, public transport, then they're also often used in, in main roads. And it comes in different forms. So you will see in there, they could come in, in a two, 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 four passenger capacity configuration. So you can have also six up to 10, but uh, actually, the capacity is just a, a number in the Philippines because even though a tricycle is configured to be occupied by four passengers, but normally we go beyond that. So you will see there in the pictures. I think it's pretty much the same also as in, as in, uh, as in Kathmandu. Yeah, uh, just a changing phase of a uh, Philippine tricycle. So as you will see previously, it's the tricycle is normally a, a motorcycle fitted with a sidecar. Okay, but in recent years, um, the the country has been adopting the uh, the, the country has been adopting the Bajaj um, configuration vehicles, the Bajaj RE. I think it's this is also mostly from South uh, South Asia. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so uh, this is also becoming very popular now. And also in the, in the past years, the number of electric bicycles have been increasing in the country. So you will see in there uh, the different bicycles. Uh, the, the one with the, with, the, with the grill, that is a China-made tricycle. The one with the light green, that is a Philippine-made tricycle. The one with the white, that is a Philippine-made tricycle. This was after the project of the Philippine government. And the third one, uh, this was the first, uh, the initial uh, models of tricycle, electric tricycles that were rolled out. So it's basically an electric motorcycle fitted also with a, with a, uh, with a sidecar. Yeah, a look at the technology. So right now, I'd like to focus more on the one what's the, what's the, that was developed with the Philippine government and rolled out locally. So uh, normally, tricycles, uh, as I've said, um, they either operate in main roads or in, in, in side streets or in uh, internal roads. But uh, the one that I'm going to discuss first is the one operating on main roads. So those operating on main roads are normally bigger capacity tricycles. And uh, normally the, the speed picks around 35, 40 kilometers. So this is the actual drive cycle. And if you're going to convert that to speed power distribution curve, you end up at around uh, four, four kilowatts uh, rated. And then uh, you could peak, at, uh, which could have a peak uh, do double that, that, that value. So that should be enough. So normally these tricycles are rated at four kilowatts. Having a battery of 4.2 kilowatts lithium iron phosphate batteries, normally the range is 50 kilometers. So the normal uh, energy economy of these tricycles is around 15, 13 to 15 kilometers per liter. And the uh, passenger capacity is uh, six passengers plus one driver. And this costs around 350,000 pesos. So in dollars, that's around $7,000. $7, so what are the economics behind uh, this type of tricycle? So I'm sure you're pretty familiar with the Bajaj type of tricycles. Yeah, I'm going to take the bigger one. In the Philippines, we have two types, the Bajaj RE and the, the Bajaj Maximize. So the Bajaj Maximize is a bigger one, having a capacity comparable to, to the tricycle that we call, that, that electric tricycle that we're, that we're comparing it with. 
So investments of the electric tricycle as mentioned earlier is around 350,000 pesos. Okay, normally and that comes already with the, with, the, with, with the battery, but normally these tricycles are operated via battery swapping. So which means then that uh, the operator needs to buy a spare battery or you going to rent out a spare battery from the battery swapping service provider. But it's a common practice to just rent it. You're just to rent it and use also your battery when you swap, swap it as some sort of a deposit. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you if you if you if you look at the economics, uh, it provides positive uh, financial uh, net um, uh, net present value. So that's good. Okay. However, uh, how come this is not readily adopted? Okay. There are several main issues. Number one, higher initial cost. Okay, the Philippines, the operators or the classicals uh, normally comes from the low income uh, sector. So they don't have the capacity to really um, fund the acquisition of these vehicles. And uh, which means they, 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 most of the time they, they loan these vehicles from the providers themselves, which would, which would uh, put in a lot of inter, high, high interest rates as, as high as 15, 20% uh, per, per annum. Uh, so, so which means then that economics very, it's very uh, sensitive to it's very sensitive to to um, to the uh, to the initial cost. So the higher initial cost, although in the long term it has positive uh, returns, the higher initial cost is a major concern. Uh, since uh, currently there's no policy yet to to mandate the adoption of this vehicle, so most of the operators would still choose. The Bajaj Maximize um, units. So, number one, higher initial cost, and then operational limitations. As I've said, these tricycles only uh, are fitted with batteries in 50 kilometer range. And normally, they operate more than 50 kilometers, even up to 70 kilometers or 100 kilometers in some cases. By the way, the economic figures that you will see here, these were based on the 70 kilometer uh, daily range, which is which is actually the average. So. Uh, it has operational limitations, and since they operate based on the battery swapping uh, system, so it means they're mostly con their operations are mostly confined around around where the battery say battery swapping stations are. But as you should, as you as you would have seen, these tricycles are either used as public transport, and in some cases are also being used by the families okay, as private transport. So uh, flexibility is very important. And that becomes now a major issue. So the limited range becomes a major issue. So there's a performance issue. So that's why a lot of people still, a lot of uh, operators still choose to, to acquire the Bajaj Maximize. Uh, limited financing options, as I've said earlier, nor mostly the, the, the financing is being provided by the, uh, by the uh, vehicle suppliers themselves and would levy very high interest rates. Um, this, as again, this, this sector, uh, the operators are coming from the low income families and they don't normally have access to bank financing, which have which offers lower interest rates. So their, their loans are not being improved because of lack of credit, uh, because of uh, credit worthiness issues. So they, they don't have a choice but to, but to resort to uh, loan sharks or to resort to the high, or to accept the high interest rates provided by the suppliers themselves. And um, in some cases, um, they don't satisfy the minimum daily BKT that would uh, ensure viability of the electric adoption of electric bicycles over the Bajaj Maximize. And uh, okay, there are also issues on the varying operational regime. So I'm going to discuss more about those later. Oh, sorry. Okay. So so what, what do we do then? Higher initial cost. So one way would be to they would be to, and then you have issues in performance, and you have also issues at initial cost. So one, one, one way that the, okay, the, the local sector is looking at, the local industry is looking at right now is to, okay, to offer them without the batteries, to, to sell them without the batteries, and then lease out the batteries. So, and then the, these batteries that, are, that will be leased out are, are of bigger capacity. So have a capacity of 100, 100 kilowatt hour, uh, 100 kilometers. So, so th that would be possible now because um, it's not part the battery cost is not part of your of your vehicle cost. So you can increase now the capacity of your battery and then just rent it out. Yeah. So that that is one strategy, and then you can do home charging normally at night because the range of the of the battery is enough to cover the 
the requirements of the whole day. And then as I said, you, do, uh, you acquire this through battery, uh, through battery these things, so you don't buy the battery. And this brings down your, this cuts down the cost difference of the, the budget maximizing electric bicycles to, to, uh, to acceptable uh, levels. Another option is to maintain the battery size, but uh, adopt fast charging batteries. So you don't need a spare battery in this case. So, and then you just uh, charge it really quick whenever you need to, to charge. But in both cases, the batteries will be less out. However, when you list out the batteries, you need to uh, have certain technologies or uh, your, your battery pack needs to have certain technological features. So I have this out here, the battery leasing technology in the inverse that we're Okay, we're, we're integrating in the battery packs right now. So the battery packs that we're integrating includes the GPS tracking of the batteries. Of course, batteries are very expensive. It's important that we're able to track them. Next is the remote condition monitoring, maintenance, and control. So we monitor the uh, performance of the batteries. We monitor the discharge, discharge charge efficiencies remotely. We're able to monitor the temperature of the batteries and we're able to, and um, uh, we apply AI to, to um to uh to detect whether there are uh, problems with the with the batteries and uh, when when we learn about that then uh, we will be able to call the attention of the uh, operator and then replace the battery uh, that we have loaned to him uh, before the battery eventually gets totally destroyed and we can do also a remote uh, maintenance uh, calibration of the batteries and then. Uh, when when the uh, when the uh, operators are not are able to pay their dues, then we have the option also to remotely cut off uh, a supply to the to the vehicle. Uh, we're also integrating tamper tracing and proofing. Uh, tamper tracing in the sense that Filipinos are very uh, are very technology. Uh, um, I I don't know I don't know how can I say that uh, as. Um, they're very technology curious, so they would want to think her thing uh, on, on things. And of course, these are very, very expensive equipment. So, so we have integrated some tamper tracing and proofing, uh, tamper tracing and proofing uh, features in the in the battery in the battery, uh, so that we know whether the battery is being tampered. Okay, and also some charging encryption because they're supposed to be charged only using the, the batteries that we provide. So. So in case they they're, they're being charged, we're using other chargers. Uh, the, the batteries won't charge up. So the batteries are encrypted. So yeah, so uh, battery leasing would be a good way to to look at. But of course, you have to ensure that okay, you're you're able to protect the investment also of the uh, of the of the investor. Yeah. Now. Daily mileage, uh, VKT design, and then uh, economics. So we are looking at our three configurations. In one would be a 50 kilometer battery uh, vehicle with a, with a spare battery for swapping. In the other one would be a 100 kilometer uh, slow charging battery. Uh, then um, it's permanent on the vehicle and it's being charged at home at the end of the day. Then the third one is a fast charging battery at which you can charge in time of day at a really fast rate. So um, how do their economics change with, uh, with the VKTs, with the, with the daily uh, vehicle kilometers travel? So if you look at, for example, in here, for the base battery, so, that, so the base battery is the slow charging battery. The, the uh, high range, the higher range battery batteries, also a slow charging battery. And uh, okay, there, there are certain, uh, mm, is, points that we can, we can assert in here. Um, for slow charging batteries, if the daily BKT is less than the range, so that is the case, that is the case of the, uh, of the uh, uh, 50 kilometer battery. So the range, as I've said, is 70 kilometers, right? Uh, 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 no, sorry, sorry, uh, we, we vary the, 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 the daily mileage. So, so, so if the um, range goes beyond 50 kilometers now, then as you would see, you would see that the, uh, Economics goes down. Why does it goes down? It means that you have to adopt. You have to rent a, a spare battery. Okay, unlike if it's just within the range of the uh, the range of the of, of a single battery. And then beyond that, then the economics starts to pick up again, because you 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 uh, obtain more savings as you travel more because uh, your your savings mix depends on the difference between the energy costs of the of the of the ICE and 
and the uh, and the electricity that you that you consume. Okay. Uh, if the VKT is greater than the range, the delay v, delay VKT is greater than the range. Ah, so sorry, that's the first one. If the delay VKT is greater than the range, so it goes up. Your economics then goes down when it reaches the range of the battery, and then it starts to pick up again. Uh, if the VKT is less than the range, so that is the case of the 100 kilometer battery, then it just go, goes up until it reaches your, its uh, okay, the limit. So in this case, it's from 20 kilometers up to 100 kilometers, that is still within the range of the battery. So it continuously okay, goes up. And um, now you would ask, how come there's a difference between, between the base battery and the uh, and the higher range battery because if you're do if you're adopting a higher range battery your vehicle is a lot is a, a lot heavier so that cuts down also a bit your energy your energy economy uh, and then of course the optimum it would be okay, o, o would be always a case where in your daily VKT is equal to your ratio you're able to maximize the ratio battery and at the same time you don't have to rent an extra an extra uh, an extra battery. But for fast charging batteries, okay, then uh, it just goes up okay, with, the, with, the daily, with the daily VKT. Of course, it could always be argued that, okay, as your VKT increases, it means you're going to charge more of the batteries. That's going to cut down the life of the batteries. He bought, uh, okay, whatever battery costs, with that additional battery costs with that entail is being superseded by the savings provided by the difference of the electricity costs and the, and the fuel costs. Now, on tier operational regimes, the okay, Philippines right now is, is transitioning into a modern public transport system. So it, and it starts by rationalizing the roads. Okay, tricycles were introduced before to serve routes which are too small, which have passed with which have demands that are too small for, for the jeepneys. So I don't know if you've seen some jeepneys. So jeepneys these are like uh, 16 to 20 passenger uh, vehicles, and they have fixed routes. So um, okay, before um, there still there were a lot of routes that don't have enough capacity to support the operations of these bigger vehicles, so bicycles were introduced. Okay, but now passenger capacity uh, demands have changed, so that's why the government is doing some rationalization work. So some of the tricycle routes will be will be um, replaced by the cheaper routes. Some cheaper routes will be replaced by modern PUV routes, uh, PUVs. These are like mini buses, and then some of the mini buses, mini bus routes will be. Uh, will be served now by by the bus route. So the question now is, uh, okay, where where do we, where, where how how do we use now the electric tricycles? Okay, they are too big compared to the tricycles that are used in internal roads, but uh, they are also too small compared to the electric jeepneys. So and in terms of comp and co uh, competitiveness economically, then you have an issue when you compare the economics of a big of, of these tricycles, electric tricycles to the shippies, then you have also problems when you compare okay, these bigger tricycles with the electric tricycles with the smaller tricycles. So with, that means then that uh, there's a need to develop a new type of, so if the tricycle operation will be confined to internal roads only, and these tricycles are too big, so then, then it means there's a need to, okay, to, to redefine the design of this of these tricycles. So, so we got some um, some uh, tricycle data for in the internal roads, and then similar what what that we've done before. So if that's the speed the power distribution, and um, if we adopt, for example, a two kilowatt K traction motor, that that basically involves both of the operating points, and then the peak uh, loads could be handled by the peak uh, peak power of the of the motor, and then you can still maintain a fifty kilometer. Uh, 50 kilometer uh, range, a 2.5 kilowatt um, battery pack. Okay, so you need now a smaller battery because you're just operating in internal roads with, with, with lesser number of passengers. And also the, uh, the dry cycles are not too taxing for the, for the battery. And um, okay, that brings down your cost to 250,000. Okay, that is with one battery, attach low, slow, slow charging battery, and then you adopt, you just rent out a second one. So um, then the NPV would now be, uh, the financial net present value will now look somewhat like this. So 50 kilometers, slow charging battery, as we've said before, 
if the economics improves, then suddenly when it reaches the, the range of the battery, it goes down because you need now to rent a second battery during swapping and then it goes up again. He bought, if, if you're going to use, let's say, the bigger tricycles in this route, then you won't have the, you won't have the economics. Now, uh, some would ask, uh, how come it won't have economics? Then it, it can carry more passengers. Okay, but normally, the internal, the internal tricycles uh, operate on a point, 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 or like a taxi service. So normally, you, you hail one, you, your group rides it, and then you, you're, you're being, uh, you're being, uh, um, driven to your to your to your uh, selected destination okay within the with, within the area so the uh, bigger capacity won't really help okay, in okay, in the internal road operations now there's also the question of why not retrofit okay number one this lack of standards so there's a lot I'm, I'm part of the um, technical committee uh, developing the standards. So what we basically do there is just look at the existing standards, evaluate whether they're applicable to the country or not. And yes, it was mentioned earlier, regulations is different from the standards. So right now, there's a lack of standards that may be adopted uh, internationally. Um, later on, I'm going to mention that the uh, government is now funding a study to develop local standards for this one. So number one, lack of technical standards. That is very, very important if you want to do retrofit. Next, um, retrofitting would have some issue with the, with the initiatives right now in the Philippines because we're not just looking at changing the power train, but we're looking at the whole design. As you will see in here, the, the old configuration where you have your motorcycle, then you have a bicycle on the right, um, is very inconvenient for, for the passengers. It's not, it's not that comfortable. So that's why um, even without the regulations, the uh, tricycle sector has been adopting the the, the, the Bajaj RE because the passenger, the um, commuting public, choose to ride them over uh, over the old uh, the old design. So okay, there is that shift right now. So so retrofitting the old configurations is, is also now a big question whether that makes sense or not, especially that most of them are are already so old and. As I've said earlier, government is now starting funding a study um, to look at the sense of okay, coming up first with the standards. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, to look at the sense of first uh, introducing or adopting uh, um, um, retrofitting of uh, older tricycles to electrics. And then if it makes sense, then the study also looks at developing a local uh, a homegrown standards for for uh, retrofit uh, kits for, for, for uh, the old tricycles. So before I end, some, just some key points. Uh, performance, initial costs, and long-term economics, these are the enabler, these are the key factors that needs to be satisfied due to facilitate the adoption of electric tricycles. Um, and it's very important always to to, uh, to come up with, to adopt the right solution. And that starts by defining the operational parameters. And that's gonna, decide, that's gonna dictate your, your um, the design of your tricycles. So you look for the right solution and the best solution may not always be the, may not always be the one. In fact, okay, why not just a, an elect, uh, a, a pedelec, a pedelec, um, a pedelec um, um, tricycle, for example. So uh, thank you very much.